So in this video, we're going to talk about the writing process. So we're going to look at some models and some different processes that people So this is the most common conventional model of the writing process. And you'll notice that it's fairly linear. And you've probably seen something like this before. You may have seen it in a different illustration or with different words, but it will probably seem kind of familiar. So we conventionally talk about it starting with invention. That is, this is the phase where you come up with what you want to say. I'm using the word invention because although brainstorming and pre-writing are often used synonymously, they have specific meanings that I'm avoiding here. So brainstorming refers to a specific process of just throwing ideas out and you know jotting whatever comes to your mind down, uh, whereas invention can take place in a lot of different methods. And I'm also avoiding pre-writing because as we'll talk about later, it doesn't always happen before the writing. And then conventionally we say, after you've done your invention, you go on to drafting, which is where you actually do the writing. And it's okay to write badly at this point because it's, it's only a draft, right? Um, so this is the point where you generate text. And then we move on to revision where we make deep changes. Um, revision is not just fixing your typos and making sure your spelling's correct or whatever. Um, this is literally seeing again. So you see the re, which is the again, and vision, which is the seeing. When we talk about someone's vision for a project in revision, they might completely change that vision. So you might change things like your content, your structure, your tone, even who your intended audience is. Um, and from there, then you can move into editing and proofreading where you fix your typos and your errors and make your sentence structure the way you want it to look, um, make the formatting correct. And the reason that it's important to distinguish between these is you don't want to spend an hour working on fixing typos and then realize that you don't need that section at all. That's never a good feeling. So that, those two typically do go in that order. And then everyone always forgets this last stage, which is publishing. And I don't necessarily mean publishing in the sense of a printer like Random House prints your book, although that absolutely can be publishing. Um, I just mean delivering it to your audience. And so this will depend on your rhetorical situation. It can be as simple as clicking post on your uh, Facebook posts. That's, that's all it has to be. Um, so you might be wondering, where does research fit into this? After all, this is a class on research. Um, so typically, we put research in between invention and drafting. So we come up with what we want to talk about, we go find out what other people are saying, and we think about how that affects what we're saying, and then we put it into a draft. But that's not necessarily always the case. The fact is, research fits in everywhere. Um, and partly this is because the writing process itself is not always straight and linear. And partly it's because you don't always know what's going to come up in the research process. It can be messy. So the truth of the writing process is, although we model it as a nice neat line so that we can talk about it, because it's much easier to talk about if we can talk about these discrete phases and how they typically flow together, it really looks more like this. Um, it's messy and at any point you might move in between. You might go from invention to drafting and back to invention again. You might go from drafting to revision and back again. Um, or you might move between any of those or you might move between any of those or you might even go from publishing to invention. It happens all the time. You've published a thing. Someone says, that's great. Now turn it into something else. So you can enter the writing process at any point, you can come out at any point, and you can go back in at any point. So it really is a messy tangle, but it's important to be able to talk about these different stages so that we can understand the different things that we do while we're composing. With that in mind, not everyone has the same writing process. There's different writing processes for different people. And one way we can talk about that is with one draft writers and multi draft writers. So as I go through these one draft writer and multi draft writer characteristics, I want you to think about which of these seems to more describe how you typically compose. So one draft writers spend a lot of time in invention. They spend a lot of time planning. 
They often make very detailed plans, such as outlines, very formal plans. Um, they will say things like, I can't write until I know what I want to say. And they resist revision. Once they're done with their draft, they're done. They want to put it in a box and never see it again. Um, and they seem to be procrastinating much of the time because they spend so much time making their plans. And so it seems like they're putting it off. But that's not necessarily the case. What they're actually doing is thinking about what they want to say. Multi-draft writers, on the other hand, spend a lot of their time in revision rather than invention. They collect a lot of drafting material, and then they often cut things down. So while one draft writer will build things up, a multi-draft writer will collect a lot of material and then cut out what they don't want. And they'll say things like, I don't know what I want to say until I've said it. And they tend to resist pre-writing activities. They, they say things like, I just want to get started. I, I just need to start writing. And they may seem to take longer because they often start sooner by drafting sooner, but that's not necessarily the case. They, they're just taking a different path to the same goal. Um, and it's possible to be somewhere in between. So if you're sitting there going, this doesn't really describe me in either case, or this only describes me for certain situations, that's perfectly normal. Just like modeling the writing process, the reality is a lot messier, and this is just a tool we use to talk about it. For instance, when I'm writing academic papers, I'm very much a one draft writer. I hate revising papers. You ask me to revise a paper and it will probably take a year. Um, but I spend a lot of time in invention. I will make detailed outlines that if you get your hands on my outline, you've basically got your hands on my first draft. Um, so you, you see a lot more planning in that, and it's very much a one draft thing. Whereas when I'm writing fiction, I'm a multi-draft writer. It takes me at least four drafts to know exactly what I'm doing. Uh, the first draft is to find out what I want to say. The second draft is to say what I want to say. The third draft is to say what I actually want to say. And the fourth draft is to get it right. Um, so even the same writer, depending on their writing uh, situation, their rhetorical situation, can go between being a one draft or a multi-draft writer, depending on what their process is and what works best for them. So as we think about the writing process, I want you to think very carefully about what works best for you, where are your struggle points, and what can you do to compensate for those struggle points with your strengths. Okay, that's it.